Good morning, sweet ones. Happy Earth Day. Let us celebrate. Kind of bear with me. I just woke up a little bit ago. Do you feel the magic? Embrace it. It is magical, magical, magical. There is a lot in the air today. There's a lot in the magic in the air every day. So we want to, I would really like you to observe something, if you will. You spend your life, good morning, Adela, good morning, Angelique, good morning, Brad. Each of you spend your lives searching and seeking. And contemplate this and observe this for a moment, if you will. If you allowed yourselves to stop seeking and to stop searching and to stop focusing, good morning, Miguel, on the one, on that ultimate romance, that, that incredible love affair. If you stop and allow yourselves to observe that which you seek, that which you ser search for, if you allow yourselves to, to, to stop, breathe, observe, and seek, I love you too, sweethearts, for that one, what would you do with your life if you knew if you were given absolute clarity that you would never find the one, how would you spend your life? What would you do? And that, sweet ones, is what you need to focus on. That is how Everything that you seek and you search for really is found within you. Because if you would stop seeking and searching for the one outside of you, and you allowed yourself to be the one that you are seeking or searching for, you would discover that you would pay a little more attention to what makes you happy. You would observe and discover that you would pay a little more attention to yourself. You will observe and discover, sweethearts, that you would buy that cute little dress for yourself rather than, ooh, I might attract Mr. Rat in this dress. Or, gentlemen, that gold chain that you think might look pretty nice for her. Oh, this bling might attract the one I'm looking for. Why not? Wear it for yourself. When you uh, can allow yourselves to stop searching and seeking and doing and being everything for everyone else outside of you, you will find you love yourself into a higher frequency. You have spent your lives seeking and searching and wanting and needing someone 
outside of you, the idea of somebody being the one, and you realize you are that one. And if you allow yourselves to, to step back, if you will, and pamper you, you will find that that one that you are seeking really is you. You're that ultimate one. You're that ultimate grace. You're that ultimate seeking, if you will. There is so much within each of you. And yet, you observe it as all being outside of you. Everything that you see, you experience in the physical world, and many of you are aware of this, is a reflection. You are always experiencing your own energy, sweethearts. So if you are observing yourself in a relationship and you feel unsatisfied, you feel disrespected, you feel untrusting, those are aspects within yourself. I love you, sweetheart. Good morning, Dean. And... Now let's move, let, let's do a little quantum jump forward for a moment, for a moment, sweethearts, and let's, let's observe what's happening outside of you right now, and let's observe what's happening within you right now. Right now, many feel like collectively we are going through a dark night of the soul. Collectively, planetarily, yes, you are. Now, again, you have, good morning, Phaedra. You, again, you have, the, for lack of a better descriptive way of putting it, you have waves. The, you have the forerunners. You have the, the first waivers. You have second waivers. You have third waivers. You have yada, yada, yada. Now, each of you are at your own levels of awareness. And each of you can listen or to a video. You can, can read a post. You can search for information. And depending on the level of your awareness is going to determine the amount of that information you are receiving. You can go back each year if you will, or every six months, whatever it may be for you, and read or the same post or watch the same video, and it will activate you every time. It don't matter if it was written today, if it was written 10 years ago. Because where your frequency was at the time you read it, you were only able to take in so much of that light-coded information, if you will. So you can go back and you can read a post or, or listen to something or, or listen to a video or go back and, and watch a, a video or listen to or read the Emerald Tablets or this or that, whatever it may be. And it's going to activate you in a different way every time you read it because your frequency has changed. The higher you raise your frequency, sweet ones, which can only be done by going within, is by observing and changing the energy within you. 
there are many that that come into my presence that or or come to for me for guidance whatever it may be healing whatever and i have heard and observed time and time and time again no this isn't about me i know when it's about me there is no reflection here this is about them i know myself sweet ones i'm here to say this and with anything i say i post i write i encourage you to go with in validate it for yourself there is in every given moment sweethearts nothing that is not you that you are experiencing so when you sit there and, and, and you say no this isn't me this is them I am sharing with you that you, the second you do that, you are shutting yourself off and you are blocking yourself from the truth of your spirit and what it is trying to show you. In every given moment, in every given breath, you are experiencing you. You are experiencing yourself, your own energy. And one of the greatest things that I, that I am observing through those of you that, that are contacting me and, and just observing in general, not only from the ship and the deck of the ship and from underneath, if you will, I'm observing it all around. And... That is this. There are many of you in a space right now, especially the Divine Feminine Incarnates, that are in a space of giving up. Giving up on love. Oh yeah, I believe in true love, but I need to guard myself. That's not true love, sweetheart, sorry. That may be true love for you at the level of awareness you're at. But that is not true love. And you do not trust in true love. You do not believe in true love. In any way, shape, or form. If you put up any kind of defense mechanism. If you have to guard yourself in any way, shape, or form. Well, I have to protect myself. I have to put up boundaries. I have to guard myself from being being hurt he or she may not be ready therefore I have to protect myself here it's been too long he or she is not communicating with me but I feel them he or she is not in that space yet so I'm just gonna walk away okay walk away but when you walk away, or when you put up those defenses, or you feel that you need protection from love, I encourage you to go within. There is at no given moment that you are not protected. There is in any given moment absolutely no purpose if you are in a frequency of total self-love if you will for safety for protection for boundaries there is never a given moment when you have fully surrendered to your spirit That you have to be protected from anyone or anything in the physical human world. When you fully allow yourself to surrender to love, sweethearts, to yourself, to God, 
to Creator, whatever label you would like to give it. When you allow your soul to fully surrender to love, you will observe and discover and manifest just that. There is no purpose. To feel you have to shield yourself in any way, shape, or form from spirit, from love. I hear so often, especially from the feminine incarnates, Well, he's not communicating with me, so he must not love me. It must not be real. Why do you judge it? Sweethearts, I ask you to go inside, go within, and observe where you lack trust in yourself. Where you lack faith in yourself, and where you are not Loving yourself. Observe and inquire within as to why you feel you have to protect yourself. You have to put up a boundary. You have to put up a shield to shield yourself from love. In any given moment, all there is, is love, sweethearts. And if you have to put up boundaries, if you have to protect yourself, if you have to shield your heart in any way, shape, or form, in even any given moment or in any given breath, you are shielding a part of yourself from the divine connection of God that you are. You are shielding yourself from love. Love is, sweethearts. It is every fear. It is every emotion. It is every moment. It is every particle of light, whether condensed or expanded. This is a journey for each of you to learn to think with your heart and to feel with your mind. Not to think with your mind, sweet ones, and feel with your heart. I said last week that in the brain there are seven hearts. And in the heart there are seven brains. Humanity was programmed to skip over activating the seven brains in the heart first. And when you can learn to think with your heart rather than your mind, when you can allow yourself, Archangel Michael always has you shielded, sweetheart. Those are tools for each of you on your level of awareness as you grow and return back to the innocence and the purity of all that you are, Phaedra. So yes, those are tools. Do I call up on them? Do I do I use them? Absolutely, I do. I'm not disencouraging that. What I am encouraging is for you to go within and observe why you feel the need to guard your heart. Why you feel the need for boundaries. Why you feel unprotected. Because you see, Archangel Michael is not outside of you. Just as if God's not outside of you, just as the devil is not outside of you. They are frequencies within you. Mother Mary is a frequency that you connect to on your journey. Jesus is a frequency that you connect to. They are dimensional frequencies. That's why some of you can connect to, to some aspects of your 
of your angelic selves, why some of you can connect to the galactic aspects of yourself, why some of you can connect to the cosmic, the planetary. There's different aspects of self that you connect to on different frequencies, and when you raise your frequencies to those levels, you discover that you are able to connect to more aspects of yourself. That's exactly right, Phaedra. But let me rephrase that. There is no if. You are love, period. Sweet ones, it don't matter if you're in the throes of the fires of the abyss. Or in the bliss of paradise and ecstasy. It is love. It is just a different frequency. One is a lower frequency. One is a higher frequency. And all in between. There is no if. It is. It is what it is what it is. And that is, is love. It is everything and it is nothing. And when you allow yourselves to observe that, observe why, the, the observe the feeling as to why you need to guard your heart. Right now, energetically, the masculine is rising. The masculine has risen. Sweethearts, in this planetary ascension, the divine feminine awoken first. The divine masculine incarnates that carry the mother's feminine frequency more than others are the, are the masculine that woke up first. But the feminine divine energy woke up first. And now the masculine divine energy, if you will, has risen. So, for all of you divine feminine incarnates, May you observe what I am sharing here. What makes you think? And the key word there is think, ladies. What makes you think that just because you have come so far on your journeys and that you awakened unto who you are over the course of the past few years, that the masculine have to be right where you're at in this moment. Ladies, observe, please. Observe. If your twin, if you will, Whoever the one is that you seem to believe and think is the one. Why is it so easy for you to give up and walk away? Because it's been three years, five years, whatever it may be. Where is your lack of faith and trust in yourself and your knowing? Remember, you're always experiencing your own energy. This is never about him or her or the one. This is always about you. The divine feminine is in an energetic space right now, stagnation of holding, of confusion. Remember, everything is energy, beautiful sweethearts. So if you're feeling the need to back off, if you're feeling the need of being tired of waiting, if you're feeling the need to guard your heart, if you're feeling the need 
for anything. I encourage you to go within and observe the need. Because it's the need that's leading you wrong. You see, sweetheart, spirit doesn't need anything. The human vessel is the one that needs, wants, desires. Dean, sweethearts, this is what this is what Dean has written. Don't want to guard my heart, and I don't. Key word there is but. But I get ripped apart for just being me every time. Then Dean, sweetheart. I encourage you to go to step outside of yourself, if you will, to go within and observe. Because nothing is being done to you, even though it is physically presented that way. In the experience, everything is being done for you, giving you the opportunity to observe. Remember, you're always experiencing your own energy. So... If you get ripped apart for just being me every time, that is your spirit giving you the opportunity to observe where your humanness is intercepting the messages and guidance from spirit. Observe where your human, your ego, your mind is controlling your feelings through thought. Never allow your mind to overwrite your hearts, sweet ones. It is your heart that gave your mind life. And without your heart, you are led into chaos. You are led into the darkness Asking the universe to continue to give you lessons that you have not had enough of the darkness. If our spirit feel any need, don't we feel hollow inside? Well, that's on an individual thing, Barat. Your spirit doesn't need anything. Your ego needs everything. Your human... See, your human thinks that it needs gratification, sweet ones, on the outside. Your human, your ego, I don't separate the two. They're one and the same. Your ego is your humanness. Because it's the command, your heart is the command center in physical vessel whatever the heart does says when you reach that frequency where you live through your heart and not through your thoughts no need I need a new partner ego absolutely Phaedra and the reason why I I I encourage you to go within and, and to observe that sweetheart there is no need for a new partner. What your spirit is showing you is that you need you to partner with you. There never is a need outside of you. If you have a need outside of you, there is a space within you that is lacking self-love. Spirit will, living alone, Phaedra, sweetheart, do you know why we end up being alone for many moments on our journeys? To learn to love ourselves. As a society, as a global, as a world, as a partners, in whatever way you want to give it, we have been taught 
that we need others outside of us to make us feel complete, to make us feel whole. To, take, to make the feelings of rejection and abandonment go away. The core issues of any feeling of rejection and abandonment comes from not being connected with your spirit within yourself. There is many, and there is no right or wrong, and I'm not judging this, I'm just bringing it to your guys' attention, a forefront, so you can observe how it applies within yourself. There is many on this spiritual journey who have been shown, who have been presented with experiences, who have been guided to leave the relationships they're in. There have been many that have been guided to move, to go switch jobs, to do this, to do that. And yet, the familiarity and the comfort of remaining in those spaces has has been turned into, for lack of a better descriptive way of saying it, mm -hmm. their saving grace. Because they do not trust in themselves enough. Simple mm -hmm. as that. And that's okay, because it is in those moments when you are guided by spirit. It is in those spaces that... When we do not listen to the guidance, the intuition that we are given, that we just tell that it's just telling the universe, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the next level. I'm not ready to connect to you in that way. I'm just going to stay right here and what's comfortable and what's familiar. I'm not going to take the risk. And you will discover the higher, the more inner work you do, the higher you raise your frequencies, sweethearts, that risk becomes the ultimate freedom of your soul. I didn't say spirit. I said your soul. No. For myself, spirit and the soul are two different things. For myself, spirit is spirit and soul is human. You ascend the soul, you descend spirit. The soul is the humanness. And when you are incarnated into human form is when you become that soul. When a baby is born, what's the first thing obstetricians do? They slap it on the okay. ass, and that's because they want that breath of the Holy Spirit. And it is in that moment that the Holy Spirit goes into that physical vessel, sweet ones. The Holy Spirit is your breath. It is everything and nothing. And so, when... You re come to a space, many spaces on your journeys. And you doubt that guidance you're given. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just understand that when you are presented with an, with an opportunity at a crossroads... And you allow doubt and fear and comf comfort and familiarity override that guidance. You are telling the universe, I'm not ready to experience that yet. I haven't learned that yet lesson yet. So I'm going to bypass it and I'm going to choose this way for now. Because it's more familiar and it's more comfortable. And it's the road that's more traveled. So I know that if I have problems... There's going to be somebody along the way that can help me. And you're just telling the universe, 
Okay, universe, God, Lord, whatever, whatever label you want to give it, creator, I'm not ready to learn that lesson. Bring it back to me even more intense next time around. But that's okay. I'll be ready for it then. I can handle the intensity then. And that's okay. Because when it comes around again, again, everything is your own energy. And you will be presented with it again. For every boundary, every shield you have to put up, every time you have to guard your heart, you're just telling spirit, God, universe, whatever label you want to give it, that you're not done learning that lesson. You're not done being in misery. You're not done being in chaos. No, I need to experience this some more. Bring, bring more on to me is what you're saying. When you allow yourselves to fully heal within... When you allow yourselves to fully embody your spirit, you will come to a space where you don't have to go into meditation. You do not have to set aside a specific time mm -hmm. to connect to spirit. Spirit is connected to you in every moment, every breath. And you are connected to it. I don't have to go into meditation to hear my spirit right now. I don't have to go into meditation to hear any aspect of myself. And I understand that not everybody is at, has that connection that I have with myself. And I'm not judging it. That's okay. I'm just showing you, you will reach a space when you allow yourself to reach that space. Where spirit will guide your every breath, spirit will guide your every thought, spirit will guide your every action, your every reaction, and whatnot. It is not a matter of balancing spirit with the human, sweethearts. It's, it's about letting the human go. Letting the soul ascend and live in paradise as spirit now embodies the form that housed the soul that protected the soul so you see the only protection that is needed sweet uns is the protection of yourself this vessel this spacesuit that you see this spacesuit is a tool. The more you nourish this, this, the flesh, whatever, the more you nourish it. The more you nourish within. But this spacesuit, this spacesuit is Archangel Michael's shield. Mm -hmm. This spacesuit, this human vessel. Is your sword of peace. This vessel is your armor, if you will. And you will find that the higher you allow yourself to raise in frequency, this spacesuit, this vessel, what you call your physical body, you are no longer emotionally attached to it. You realize that it's a tool. That it's not who you are. You realize, honey, I don't channel. Channelers are people that see their higher self outside of themselves. Channelers are people that connect with what higher aspects of themselves and higher dimensions that they 
feel that it's an entity outside of themselves. I am not a channeler. I am not a medium. I am not a psychic. I am, period. I do not channel. I never have, and I have said that from the beginning because I have the understanding that there is no angel, there is no devil, there is no spirit outside of myself. That I am God and I am connected to my higher self in all ways. I am not a channeler. I am the Holy Spirit. I am God and I am embodied into this vessel known as Linda Good McGillis. I have made many posts and so have many others that have repeatedly shared the wisdom that there are no channelers. It is just higher aspects of yourself in different dimensions that you connect with. And I have great respect for all those that consider themselves to be channelers. I have great admiration for them all. Because they bring the living word of spirit out into the physical. However, again, I will state this with all the authority of God that I am. Those channelers are connecting to aspects of themselves. They are not outside of you. They are you. And each of you will reach that frequency where you will understand fully your human vessel spacesuit will come to understand that it is not who you are, that it is just your spacesuit and you are in command of it. You each will come to that space in that higher frequency where you will understand that God dwells within you as you, Dean. And as long as you wish, as long as you try, You're going to keep wishing and you're going to keep trying. That's exactly why. Oh, right, Barat. Let me go back to Dean for a minute. This is what Dean says, sweet ones. Dean says, I wish I was more intelligent to understand. It's so foggy. It's like my cells aren't connecting properly, but I am who I am. How I am, for whatever reasons, God only knows. Let's look. Let's observe that, sweethearts. I wish I was more intelligent to understand. First off, let go of understanding. Your mind will never, sweethearts, never, never, never be able to, under, to understand, overstand, or understand spirit. The human mind does not have that capacity to expand to that level. Because the human vessel is confined in a box, if you will. Mm -hmm. Your heart can expand. Understanding and understanding can only be obtained from within your heart. It's not that you need more intelligence. Intelligence is learned. Knowledge is learned. Wisdom is felt. That there's a difference. It doesn't matter how knowledgeable you can you you become in your lifetime. If you do not have the wisdom of the heart, that knowledge don't mean shit. That's all it is, is shit. It don't mean nothing. There's no purpose for it. You can be the highest academic scholar in the whole entire globe. And if you don't have the wisdom of love behind it, it don't mean nothing. It's just words. 
Simple as that. And that is where humanity has been enslaved. How many of you have heard the term, the coined phrase, knowledge is power? And I can tell you here and now that it is the ego that thinks. There's that key word again, sweethearts, think. It is the ego, it is the mind that thinks knowledge is power. Well, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to show you. Wisdom is power. Knowledge is a slave. Because without wisdom, that knowledge is useless. Because it's all learned. You cannot learn wisdom, sweethearts. You can learn knowledge. And anything learned is taught behavior. It's someone else's thoughts. It's someone else's truth. It's not yours. It's learned. And wisdom, you cannot learn wisdom. Because wisdom is within. And it can only be felt in the stillness of the heart. And it's why wisdom is your holy breath. So no, knowledge is not power. Wisdom is the true power of the Almighty. That wisdom comes from your heart. And through that wisdom is where you come to the understanding, sweethearts. The love does not hurt. Love just is. It's the ego mind that applies hurt. That applies labels. That applies identity. And your spirit has no identity but love. You are on a journey of ascending your soul and descending your spirit. In other words, you're allowing yourself, you are on a journey to release this human body to spirit. To allow this human body to become that which it is. A spacesuit. That is used as a tool to express the wisdom of spirit through the soul of the heart of this spacesuit. And when you allow yourselves to do that, you come to the understanding there is no need for safety, protection, boundaries. Guarding at all. Because you come to understand that this vessel, this spacesuit, is not you. That you are the spirit. Which is called I. I. The ego uses I. The ego uses the word coined phrase I to make itself more powerful. But spirit is the true I, if you will. Because the letter I that people claim, the letter I in the word I in I am, is the I of God, the I of wisdom. And that I is found within the heart. Not here, and not here. When you sit there and you say, I am, 
That I is the I. That is spirit within the heart. You don't. Love is. Love is. And you don't find is the word itself in knowledge. You do find it in wisdom. Linguistics. And so, sweet ones, I really encourage you to detach yourself from having the outside world dictate to you and to go within and to really allow your spirit to guide your life rather than your physical your emotional attachments that you have to this physical vessel to this physical world and al allowing the physical to dictate to you because as long as you have the need for the physical world to dictate how you must act and behave there is a space within you that you are not loving yourself and you are not allowing spirit in. You are blocking spirit and the guidance from spirit. Never is there a need, not even in the human physical, to guard your heart, to protect your love. You are in every given moment and in every given breath, sweethearts, experiencing your own energies. So if you're giving up on that one that you know within your heart that spirit has shown you is the one. If you're giving up because they're taking too long. Because they have too many hurts or this or that. It's not them you are observing no matter how much you convince yourself. They are just presenting you a reflection for yourself. You are always experiencing your own energy. Always. So ask yourself, where is the space that I need to give more love to you? So I know, so I may release the need to guard my love. Love is, sweet ones. And in, in every given breath, you are safe and you are protected. Regardless of what the physical presents. And that can only be found within your heart. There is nothing outside of you, sweet ones. It is all within you, including your divine consort, your twin flame, whatever label you want to give it. It is a frequency, and until you reach that frequency of purity and wholeness in the sacred marriage within yourself, you will not have it outside of you. Your true divine consort cannot come to you, so you will continue on the path of experiences with twin flames. Because the twin flame, regardless of all the... The labels and misconception is not the divine consort. The twin flame is a stepping stone. So for all of you that still hold a need to have something or someone outside of you. For all of you who feel like you've met your twin flame. He's the one, she's the one, oh God, this, that, or whatever. Until you fully heal yourself within of those lower frequencies and you raise yourself up, it is not your true divine consort. It is a lesson. Because it is a, the twin flame is a frequency. And the more you raise your frequency, the more you experience closer contact of the energy signature of your twin flame your divine consort however you will have experiences with that energy through others 
giving you a taste of that twin flame energy that so many of you get confused and says, oh, oh, he's the one. Oh, she's the one. And then it falls apart. And then you come together and then it falls apart again. Oh, well, I was wrong. That wasn't the one because now you're on the next stair step and you feel that divine consort energy in this person. Oh, I was wrong. That last one wasn't my twin flame, but this one is. Oh, this one is. I know for sure this one is. Oh, I know. I know. I've met him. I'm telling you, sweet ones. You will not meet your divine consort. It will not physically manifest for you until you reach a very, very high frequency. Everything else is a twin flame stepping stone. And when you stop seeking outside of yourself, then and only then will you raise yourself to the frequency where you will meet in the physical your divine consort. Now observe I did not say twin flame. The twin flame is a lesson. It's a stepping stone. Giving you the opportunity to see really truly where you're still seeking outside of yourself and not loving yourself within. That's why it's called a twin flame. It's a flame to ignite you. And it is why the true twin soul divine consort is called the divine consort and not a twin flame. So for all of you out there who think you've met your twin flame, I'm here to tell you, sorry. You've just met an aspect of yourself. You've met an aspect of the energy signature of your divine consort. Is it your divine consort? No, because you're not ready to be there yet. Because you're still seeking outside of yourself for somebody else. You're still seeking outside of you for love that you have not given yourself within. And as long as you have to put up boundaries, as long as you have to guard your heart, as long as you have to protect yourself from love in any way, shape, or form, you have not met your twin and you are not ready for your divine consort. Period. It is never outside of you. Everything begins within. So if you're in misery, if you're lonely, if you're not understanding, but I've done all this work, I've done all this work, keep going. Keep going. Because this is not about anyone outside of you. This is about you. It is a singular journey, sweethearts. These posts that I made, it's also helpful to understand that the people that are just waking up now are not coming into contact with their divine consorts. It ain't going to happen. You got lessons. You still got inner work to do. Those that are coming into contact with what you all label and identify as your twin flame. Those that are going to start manifesting it into that holy sacred union with their divine consort that is coming into fruition now are the Blue Ray Rodden Staffers, the Blue Ray Forerunners, the Creator Seeds. In other words, all of your parents, humanity's parents. Those of us that are coming in to union in the physical with our divine consorts are the first, the forerunners, the creator seeds, the blue rays, the blue ray rod and staffers. So no, not all of you are coming into union with your divine consorts. You second waivers, you third waivers, you fourth waivers, you fifth waivers. Those that are just awakening now know you got inner work to do. Does that burst your bubbles? I'm sorry if it does. But there's a lot of misconceptions out there, sweethearts. You spend your lifetime seeking and searching for everything outside of you. And as long as you seek and you search outside of you, 
you're gonna be in fear. You're gonna have to guard your heart. You're gonna have to put up boundaries. You're gonna have to fit and feel the need for protection. So again, sweethearts, I ask you, please go within and save your own soul. There's nothing or no one outside of you that is going to save it. You want God to save you? Focus on your breath because your breath is God. That breath runs through you. God dwells within you as you. Not the twin flame, not the divine consort, not the boy next door or the girl at the grocery store. You. It's not in your religions. It's not in your cultures. It's not in your classrooms. It is. And that is, is your breath and it's within you. And everything outside of you is a tool to assist you. I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, sweethearts. And know, love is. And it's everything that you experience, whether good, bad, or indifferent. It is only the humanness and the human mind that gives it a label, that gives it an identity. Because truly, when you strip it all away, the only identity we have is that of love. That which is love. And that is an energy frequency. So in every given moment, life is an echo whether you want to embrace that truth or not. In every given moment, you are experiencing your own energy. <coughs> Excuse me. So, that so-called twin flame or lover or whatever you want to call it. Isn't communicating, isn't you this, isn't that, isn't that. That's because you yourself are not ready. And spirit is showing you that. Because as long as you have to guide your heart. It's not, guard, sorry I said that wrong. As long as you have to guard your heart and put up defenses in any way, shape, or form, then you are not ready for your divine consort. Period. Because you have to be fully opened in order to manifest it in the physical. So, on that note, have a beautiful, 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 magical day, sweet ones. And allow yourself to observe where you're still trying to protect yourself and you're still trying to hold yourself at bay because you're still guarding your heart when there is no need to. You want that ultimate union with your divine consort to manifest into the physical, then raise yourself up to that space. Because as long as you guard your heart, you're not ready for that union to manifest into the physical. Have a magical day, sweet ones. I need some coffee. I need to get dressed. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. I am holding you in eternal peace, grace, love, blessings, abundance, prosperity. Big, big hugs and blessings. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.